Good evening, President Logan, Superintendent Thompson, and members of the board. Um, we have a couple of great things to celebrate tonight, but we have some big things to do. But before we get to that, um, this month starts the census. I'm sure you have seen things around in the community. And um, we are playing our part because we want to make sure that everyone is um, counted for. Um, the census occurs every 10 years. and want to make sure that all of them everybody can be counted because that also equals help in funding for us and so i'd like to invite tamara huff down who is helping lead this work on the district's behalf to tell you a little more good evening welcome this is very important to us so thank you for being here to board president cheryl logan superintendent dr alicia thompson other board members and all present this evening. I'd like to first say hello and share with you that I'm joined today by Susie Finn from the Wichita Public Schools Strategic Communications Office. I would also like to acknowledge Caress Adams, Partnership Specialist from the U.S. Census Bureau. I would like to present tonight, in part, the census resolution as the commencement of the USD 259 census plan to ensure that all students are counted in the decennial census. The 2020 census count of children living within the boundaries of the Unified School District number 259, Sedgwick County, Kansas, also known as USD 259, will be the, on the basis of federal education funding allocated to our schools over the next 10 years. Specifically, the federal program serving our students living in poverty and students with disabilities and the populations that are prevalent in urban areas like the areas within the boundaries of USD 259, are at a high risk of being undercounted. This includes young children, people of color, low-income households, language minority families, foreign-born residents, and households with limited internet access. This is according to the U.S. Census Bureau. And children are more likely to be missed in the census count if they reside in the complex households that are also common in urban areas, such as multi-generation households, extended families, and multi-family households. So it is paramount for the school board, superintendent, principals, teachers, parent organizations, and all local leaders in USD 259 to communicate the importance of Census 2020 to families and community members to ensure that everyone is counted. President Logan, it is our recommendation that this be adopted by the board. Thank you, and I certainly can support this resolution because it is critical to our community to have every single person counted in our community. So I would entertain a motion, Julie. Yes, I, I move that the board adopts resolution 2020-02 U.S. Census as presented. I'll second. Okay, the motion was moved by Julie and seconded by Ben. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, you may cast your vote. Motion passes 7-0. Thank you. That, that's a little part for us to do. Now the real work begins, Absolutely. so thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. It really is critical that we have everybody take the census this year. Uh, Susan? Our next item of good news is one of the best parts of the year as we celebrate our distinguished classroom teacher nominees and um, winners for this evening. And we would like, I would like to invite Amanda Kingry to come down along with Michelle Kuda as we celebrate. And we offer, come before? I told you about this. <laughs> Don't be bashful. Uh, our, our, first, we will recognize our runners-up who just came in, and then we will celebrate our winners. So, Amanda and Michelle. All right. Good evening. So, we are here, like she said, to recognize some of our outstanding teachers who are the runners-up and winners of the Distinguished Classroom Teacher Award. So, first, we want to recognize and celebrate our runners-up, and um, we will have certificates for each of you. So in the new teacher category, we have Ashton Taylor, third grade teacher at Krista McAuliffe Academy, and I don't believe she is here with us this evening. In the new teacher secondary category, 
Emma Richenberger, language arts teacher at Stuckey Middle School. In the primary category, Lindsay McCauley, kindergarten teacher at Gardner Elementary. In the intermediate category, Violet Gomez, third grade teacher at Cloud Elementary. In the middle school category, Bill Schrant, physical education teacher at Horseman Dual Language Magnet. In the high school teacher category, Susan Credle, math teacher at Northeast Magnet High School. In the support teacher elementary category, Tish Friend, MTSS facilitator at Cloud Elementary. And finally, in the support teacher secondary category, Rosemary Donahue, or Donahoe, I'm sorry, <laughs> Donahoe, librarian at Curtis Middle School. And congratulations again to all of our runners up. And so. Okay, so now we'd like to invite Dr. Thompson and board president Cheryl Logan to come on up. So we're going to... Okay. okay, so we will announce a name and then we'll have a short video after each name. We'll, we're going to start with the distinguished classroom teacher in the new teacher category, which is Afton Miller, fourth grade teacher at Harry Street Elementary. You're gonna be walking around at a zero. When I stop clapping, you are going to find a partner and tell them what does she really mean by I've had it. Afton Miller greets every day with a smile. As soon as you enter her classroom, you see students engaged in learning. She has a talent for making her lessons kid friendly, helping her students understand what they are learning and why they are learning it. She believes students should have a deep understanding of a topic rather than just memorizing it. That's a good idea. What are you thinking, Annie? She treats every child with dignity and respect and works to develop a family atmosphere in her classroom. She loves seeing her students model her behavior and treat each other with the same respect. The relationships she builds with her students motivate them to engage in their learning. Listen with attention. Colleagues say that Afton has qualities you would see in an outstanding veteran teacher. She is a leader in the school and shares ideas and different perspectives with other teachers. She is motivated to learn from others in order to keep improving as a teacher. I need a sentence and a drawing of our preposition between. Afton originally studied criminal justice in college, but her friends told her she would make a great teacher. After taking a job as a temporary term para, her life was changed, and she knew she had to become a teacher. Afton says she loves teaching and couldn't imagine doing anything else. Her biggest reward is seeing her students grow. She knows she is making a difference in our future leaders. It's been amazing to just watch them flourish into all these incredible personalities. Um, and I'm a huge teacher on building relationships, so, um, I always try to make sure that they feel connected to me and I've gotten to feel connected back. Oh, mind blown. Um, I just want to say as an educator, the biggest thing is you want to do the best for your students and um, just having recognition for being 
or doing the best that you can is awesome. So thank you. <laughs> okay. In the new teacher secondor secondary category, Sam Belson, social studies teacher at Coleman Middle School. If I say somebody is the best uh, teacher or best para ever, like Miss LaShawn, right? I have to give reasons. Otherwise, it doesn't mean anything, does it? No, and then if I give reasons, what do I have to give then? Evidence, why do I have to give evidence? You'd never know it by visiting Sam Belson's classroom, but being a teacher wasn't his first career choice. While he was at Wichita State studying business, he worked as an avid tutor at Coleman. That experience made him realize his true passion for helping others learn. And then you're going to give me what's the issue with that. Okay, awesome. Students say that he is one of the best teachers they have ever had. He has the ability to keep their attention by adding excitement to each history lesson. Students say they like that he takes the time to build relationships with them, and he actively listens to what they have to say. They say that knowing that he cares makes them want to try their best. I love the real life example, um, but let's think about it in other terms. like. If he's a prisoner, is he still in charge of his country? Yeah. So could that be a flaw? Yeah. Colleagues say that he brings joy to the Coleman staff every day. He is already regarded as a leader among his peers. Because of his previous experience as an avid tutor, he trains other avid tutors, both at the school and across the district. One of his biggest fans is another social studies teacher at Coleman, his brother Jonathan, who is also his mentor and collaborator. If she needs to give me two things that the other side would say. So people would say, what? What would they say as their reason? So um, maybe they would say, well, it's manifest destiny, right? We get whatever land we want. So she would say that. Sam says his job is to make school a place where students want to learn history, not just because they have to. He says he will always cheer for his students while also pushing them to be the best version of themselves. I really love uh, having the opportunity to not only teach content, teach stuff that I care about, but also build relationships. Um, and so I think my favorite thing has been learning how to do those two things in tandem. Um, really build relationships, but also make sure kids are learning and while we're going over in class. You're almost ready to write. Ah, I know it's so exciting. I echo what Afton said, and it, it's just awesome to be part of a district um, that is so focused on supporting teachers. I appreciate that you guys uh, do work every week um, so that we can teach every day. Um, thank you. Okay, now for the intermediate category. I'm sorry, the, for the primary category, I'd like to announce Lisa Reeb, kindergarten teacher at Colvin Elementary. First, everyone tell me, what would be the whole of our number bond? Nine. Because how many ants do we have in all? Nine. So if you haven't put your nine in, go ahead. Lisa Reeb is her students' number one fan, and they know it. She tells her students that they have two families, one at home and one at school. That feeling of family teaches her students to treat each other with kindness and respect. How many did we start with? Ten. If you marked, knocked all of them down, how many did you knock over? Ten. Yes, you got it, good job. Once she gets to know her students, she incorporates things about their lives into their lessons. Students get excited in class when they get to discuss different cultures, practice counting in different languages, or share a favorite cultural dish with classmates. She believes that when students are excited, they are more engaged and willing to learn. Think about what that is, think about it, think. What would be a five and a zero together? Fifty. Okay. Colleagues say that Lisa's students don't just include the children in her classroom, but the entire student population at Colvin. Okay. When former students struggle in a new class, she talks with their current teacher to share ideas that worked when they were in her classroom. She stays connected to those students and checks on them. Many older students at Colvin visit her to get a hug or make a connection. And former students that have moved on to middle school and high school also stay in contact because of the relationship she created when they were in kindergarten. And read us your equation. If you agree with him, let's give some snaps. 
Good job. Everybody Her coworkers say she is a leader in the building and is the heart of Colvin. She always takes time to provide support and share ideas with her colleagues. She puts 100% effort into everything she does. I get to work with some of the best kids that I've ever met. I enjoy their personalities, just when you see a light bulb come on for them. Um, working with five-year-olds, it's never a dull moment. They just keep you going and keep you busy, and it's just, it's fun. So did we solve subtraction equations? Yeah. To the, up to 10? Yes, say, we totally rock! <laughs> A little short there, but um, I really appreciate this honor. I have completely enjoyed working at Colvin Elementary for 15 years. I love this district. I love my kids. I, I just love our school, so I appreciate the honor, and I thank you guys for what you do, too, so thank you. Now I'd like to announce the intermediate category, Katherine Clunder, fifth grade teacher at Harry Street Elementary. We're going to be reading some stories, but we're also going to be reading some Horizons texts, and we're going to see how do these two texts tell the same thing, but differently. Does that make sense? Katherine Clunder delights in teaching and seeing her students grow and succeed. She's able to get her students to believe in themselves and to try new things. She plans rigorous lessons and her students rise to the challenge because she makes learning fun. Her students are always engaged and they encourage each other to do their best. And then we're also going to be working on analyzing ideas and themes, which you guys are amazing at, so good where you read a text and you say, what is the author really trying to tell us? What is the message or lesson they're conveying to us in this story? Catherine knows that students' emotional well-being is crucial to their success. Her class includes 20 minutes of family time, where she shares a message, and students greet each other and share openly about their highs and lows. She uses the insights from family time to create relationships with her students and to develop lessons with their interests in mind. She says she wants to be a person her students can trust to be there for them and to push them to pursue their dreams. Hey, don't, don't blurt. Think for a minute. Why would rain be really good for the kids? Think, think, think. Hold on. Think. I want everyone to think for a minute. Why would the rain be really good if they're trying to be hidden from the Comancheros? Catherine's enthusiasm is contagious, and she's always willing to share ideas to help other teachers be successful. She's a model classroom teacher for brand new teachers and serves as a mentor for second year fourth grade teachers. Colleagues say she has a talent for making others feel grateful, happier, and more confident. My favorite thing about being a teacher is getting to spend my days with my students. Like I feel so excited every day to come to work to see my kids and um, I joke with my friends who work in like corporate offices, they don't get to have 22 kids that think you're the coolest person ever. So I. It's fun to get to know them, but then also to have a class that feels like family. Miss Clunder's got it going on. We are here to learn Um, I just want to say thank you so much for having me here tonight and for giving this award. Um, I was born and raised in Wichita Public Schools. My family still works in this district. Um, I've never known anything but Wichita Public Schools, so I feel a heavy weight of honor to be involved in this district. Um, I'm insanely thankful for my job, working with my students, and just really grateful to be um, named this award. So thank you so much. So in the middle school teacher category, Denise Van Horn, math teacher at Robinson Middle School. Yeah, if we're leaving it in point slope form, that's all we have to do. If I say write it in slope intercept form, then would we have more work to do? Yeah. Yes. Denise Van Horn has wanted to be a teacher since she was a child. She works diligently to make math fun and engaging for her students. She will often try new strategies to help students better understand math and to motivate them to learn. 
So what would you what would you do if it was a negative? If you plugged it into your equation, what would you do? Yeah, write it down. I want to write it down. She knows that middle school math can be intimidating for some students. She knows that if students are involved in the learning process, they will develop a better understanding. Her students work together to solve the problems and explain to each other how to get the answers. She knows that when students are able to discuss the problems with others, they have mastered the concept. Slope. Find slope. And this is the only time I told the other table that you're going to simplify it all the way down. Okay? Because we're not going to simplify it like as a fraction, because do we talk about money in fractions. No. Denise not only spends time in the classroom, she also regularly attends after school activities. She knows that by attending those events, she is building another connection with her students. Her students often invite her because they know she will be there. Don't forget your negative signs. Can you simplify six ninths? Two thirds. Two thirds. Don't forget your negative sign there. Students often say she is one of their favorite teachers. And her former students say their success in high school math is due to the skills they learn in her classroom. What does negative slope look like? Okay. So this is negative slope, we know. She says she's lucky to be a teacher because every day is different and her students are her reward. I love being there and seeing the light bulbs go off and letting them see how they're gonna use math later on. So showing them the why behind the math instead of just saying, okay, here's the formula, here's what you're gonna do step by step, memorize it, have them walk through step by step and seeing why we do things. So can you write the equation in any form to fit your needs? Yes. Yes. So I have my notes. <laughs> Um, thank you to the committee for selecting me for this amazing award. I am so honored to be the middle school recipient. Um, I have been lucky to teach so many terrific students and work with the best staff for the last 16 years at Robinson Middle School. Um, they have all made my job very worthwhile and I absolutely love what I do. So. So in the high school category, we have Darren Rogers, social studies teacher at East High School. <laughs> because we're going to spend some time the last part of today talking about American foreign policy. So let's get ready to rock and roll with that. Darren Rogers believes that all students can succeed. As a teacher, he wants to find their potential and help them realize their talents and gifts. He credits that belief to a professor he had in college. Darren didn't start out studying education, but after he gave a presentation in a college history class, his professor saw his potential and encouraged him to consider teaching as a career. I'm gonna do one day on World War II. It's gonna be epic, all right? And then we will start reviewing over all of period seven, okay? His teaching style is innovative and personal. He says that if students know the value and purpose of the lesson, they'll take ownership of their learning. When you hear the phrase foreign policy, these two words, foreign policy, turn and talk with the people at your table for just a few moments. What does that mean? He often says that he doesn't teach history. He teaches students how to think about history. He says it's important to help students look at different perspectives and to use technology to see what sources are real and reliable and which ones are not. So this is very similar. So when we talk about why do we do some of the things that we do, presidents react and do things on the basis of what their predecessors have done. He makes a personal connection with each of his students by getting to know them on a daily basis. He continues to mentor students long after they graduate. Students say he is a teacher that leaves a lasting positive impression on them that they will treasure for the rest of their lives. It's every day brings up new challenges um, because you're working with humans um, and so it's, it's a new thing every single day. Even every single year to year they say we teach the same things over and over again. No we don't because especially in history uh, you're reacting to the climate and what's going on at that particular time. You don't. Good work this week. Good work this week. Good work this week. Well, thank you. Uh, thank you to the committee. Thank you to everyone. Um, I'm here because of my colleagues. I work with some of the best people at the best high school and in the best city and the best district. And so I'm just very grateful uh, for all of them and for all of our leadership as well. So thank you.
Okay, so in the support teacher elementary category, we have <laughs> we have Tiffany Peterson, vocal music teacher at Woodman Elementary School. What is distinctive about this sound? Do you remember cadence? It's a high sound. So in this, we're listening for a high sound, okay? Trying to identify a high sound. What else, Dalton? Colleagues say that Tiffany Peterson makes each student feel like the most important person on this planet. Her students sing, dance, move, play games, and play instruments in every lesson to keep them engaged and to help them learn that music is fun. Through her engaging lessons, she creates a safe and positive environment where students know that they are loved and that it's okay to try new things. What's our target? Three. Three is our target. Ms. Peterson, I can come into your classroom and I can find dough anytime. In our songs, in new songs, in old songs. Tiffany is not only a mentor to her students, but she is also a mentor for new music teachers in the district. She worked with district staff to help create the Jump Start Elementary Music curriculum for first year teachers, long term subs, and teachers that are transitioning to the profession. Tiffany says she loves being able to write lessons that demonstrate what great teaching looks like. Who lives here? You can tell me. So, so lives here, and who lives here? Me. Me. I want you to be my echo. My turn first. So, so me. So, so me. When she was growing up, Tiffany struggled with reading and math, but she was able to express herself when she discovered music. She now uses that love of music to help her students be creative, feel connected to school, and work through emotions. So we're figuring out the form of this song, we're identifying where the high sounds are in this song, and we're practicing our steady beat. That's a lot of things in just one activity, yes? Okay. Tiffany says it's both a blessing and an honor to be a positive role model in her students' lives. I love my job. I think my favorite thing about being a teacher is being able to come to school and have a safe environment for my students and to be able to um, express the joy that music brings and be able to have them be a part of that. Thank you for this honor. I think I'm like the only person that's crying. <laughs> Elementary teacher. <clears throat> um, Wichita Public Schools is one of the best districts I've ever worked for. Woodman Elementary is the best school, um, and I have the best students, so thank you so much for letting me do what I love so much. So in the support teacher secondary category, we have Lee Casper, counselor at Hamilton Middle School. The part that I really want you guys to be filling in is the About Me page. Have your teachers talk to you about this. Coworkers say that Lee Casper's positive and upbeat attitude makes her a valued staff member at Hamilton. As a former classroom teacher, she knows that her encouragement and support of teachers helps with students' educational achievement. So make that one of your goals to get that done. Cool? Social studies still looks amazing. She knows students also learn life skills when they're in school, and those skills don't always come naturally. She works to teach students how to resolve conflicts, express themselves in a healthy manner, and make wise decisions so they can be successful in school and life. She volunteered to teach a social skills class and selected students who have received the most benefit from it. The students in that class are seeing success they hadn't seen before. What are yours? Um, yes, yeah, school counselor, look at you. Physics, aid, a child and youth worker, and an animal. Awesome. So scroll down a little bit. I want to see your personality stuff. Lee is one of Hamilton's lunch supervisors, and she uses that role to build relationships with students. She also sponsors student council and organizes Red Ribbon Week activities, family skate nights, school dances, and the turkey drive. Learning style, how do you learn? This is good for you to know as well, right? It's just learning about yourself. Her colleagues know that she isn't afraid to try new things, which is why she is one of two middle school counselors piloting a new master scheduling program. She likes to learn new things that she can apply in her job. You know, middle school and high school is adapting to other teachers and their styles, right? 
Lee says she wants to excite students about their future opportunities and guide them so that they can reach their goals. I love the job where I never know what I'm going to do each day. I have a list of things to get done during the week, but I'm just available for whoever needs me and whoever comes in. So I get to work with a ton of different students. I get to work with teachers, the whole school really. Well, keep up the good work, okay? I'm excited for this nine weeks, see what our results are. Thank you as well. I would love to say thanks to my family for putting up with me and to my principal for the nomination. I just really appreciate being a part of a district that values counselors because I know that's not everywhere. Um, I love what I do. I love Hamilton. So just thank you and thank you for all what, that you guys do as well. Um, to kind of piggyback on what Lee just said, we also want to recognize all of our staff and family members that are here today to support um, our runners-up as well as our winners. So if you guys could please stand so we can recognize you. So we have a couple of other announcements to make. Two of our teachers will be our nominees for the Kansas Horizon Award, which recognizes teachers who do an exemplary job in their first year of teaching. And so our nominees are Afton Miller and Sam Belson. Also, we'd like to name those who will represent the Wichita Public Schools as our nominees for the prestigious Kansas Teacher of the Year Award next year. Our nominees are Katherine Klender and Darren Rogers. This is truly a great way to show off some of our incredibly talented teachers, and we thank you for the opportunity. Congratulations to all of you. Oh my goodness, how do we recognize people that are so outstanding? And you know what? Any one of our runners up or those that were nominated could also be up here is the winner because they're equally as good. We are so blessed in this district to have great talent and people who really care about kids. And that's what the, all of these teachers represent. Let's give them another round of applause. The two of you that are going on as our nominations for Kansas Teacher of the Year have a lot of work ahead of you, but you also will have a lot of joy, and you're going to win, both of you. <laughs> Thank you.